Hallelujah. So with Jesus joy, let's welcome our mama, Pastor Marie, a great teacher of the word. And I believe you're going to be blessed as she comes. Hallelujah. Mama, you're welcome in Jesus' name. Thank you. Thank you very much. I I'm going to read from Titus 2, um, from verse 11. For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. It teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled lives, upright and godly lives in this present age while we wait for the blessed hope, the glorious appearing of our great God and Saviour Jesus Christ, Amen. who gave himself for us to redeem us from all wickedness mm -hmm. and to purify for himself a people that are his very own, eager to do what is good. Those then are the things you should teach, encourage and rebuke with all authority. Do not let anyone despise you. Praise the Lord. I think my, my face is gone again. Yes. Yeah, I don't know what's wrong with the thing. It keeps going off. But anyway, I continue. Praise the Lord. I've been asked mm -hmm. to give a few words about um, the love, the love uh, in marriage between um, the wife and the children and the husband. And as you can see, I'm an elderly lady and I've been a long time. <laughs> I've been a long time a mother and I have been a long time a wife. So mm. praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, and, you know, I've had a lot of experience and um, uh, I'll just give you a few little things that I have found helpful and that a lot of them are scriptures that um, I, I didn't hear the first bit of the meeting. I don't know why I thought it was 7 p.m. Um, <clears throat> sometimes I forget. But anyway, I'm, my, my apologies to everybody that uh, when my turn came, I wasn't, even though I was sitting here waiting. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I am very sorry, and I'm so glad to be able to talk with you all. Praise the Lord. So, um, yes. so it tells me that I'm a wife. Submit myself unto your own husband as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the saviour of the body. The husband is not the side, we you know, he's the head. And so we have to allow him to be the head of the home through submission to him. Uh, he can then take his messianic role in the home um, and the submission is done. It's done not out of fear, but in love in love. So both me and him, we have mutual obligations. So if my home becomes deficient in marital affairs uh, or any romance, it's, the be it's beginning to break. If your marriage comes to that, you know, uh, sexual relationships is God's approved channel for fruitfulness. And praise the Lord, he's made me fruitful. He's given me five children. Mm -hmm. Everything done against it by uh, by um, either is targeted at the at the rule of the home. You know, if if um, if I done anything against it or he done anything, it's targeted. It's the beginning of the rule at home. Praise mm -hmm. the Lord. Hallelujah. So um, I'm his helpmate. So let every man know that looking after your family is your primary responsibility. Hmm. You are the one God put in the home in charge. Hmm. And 1 Timothy 5 verse 8 says, But if any provide not for his own, and especially for those in his house, he had denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. Hmm. That is a very serious scripture. Mm -hmm. But if any provide not for his own, and especially for those in his family, he had denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. Hmm. I read that many times. And it makes you stand, stand back and think, you know. So we know that there are also women, men listening in as well as women, women tonight. Mm. Many kids grow up to um, abuse, drink and smoke and uh, because their parents did it. Mm. 
Will the children of adults who are addicted to TV or PlayStation follow that destructive pattern? You know, we have adults now that are addicted to TV and PlayStations and all these sort of things. The age group up to 34 uh, are addicted to those things. Um, you have to try and limit the, the kids' TV watching and these games and all these things that they get and they get presence of them, but you have to limit the time. And uh, uh, but you may say, well, my husband, Dan, um, he, he he likes to watch quite a bit of television and he likes, you know, to play games. Uh, limiting the, the kids means he, he has to limit himself as he mm -hmm. doesn't want to do that. If he doesn't want to do that, you know, he's mm -hmm. cutting himself. Through mm -hmm. this Holy Spirit, we're able to, to, to nurture the, the fruit of self-control. Hopefully that all our husbands are able to nurture self-control. Mm -hmm. um, it talks about self-control in Galatians 5, verse 23. And that includes TV, because you can watch too much uh, TV. Yes. And you can ask yourself, like, do, do I own my TV set or does it own me? And you can ask yourself that or any other thing that you spend long That's periods right. of time in. Any other thing besides the television, gambling or any of those things. One doesn't have to look very hard to find Satan's fingerprints all over all over many of these shows that we look mm -hmm. at on television yeah. you know honestly sometimes it's hard to know what to watch because you're turning off and off and off and you know um it, this it, it's simply a matter of uh, sinful people they're they're uh, creating terrible entertainment for us mm -hmm. and you know the, the world's um, morals are crumbling crumbling you know, and uh, we have to really look at the, at the TV guides and things to see what's coming up on television and the programming to know what is suitable for watching. Mm. So we, we have to have good time investment. That's another thing I learned. Uh, mm. Don't forget to spend time nurturing your children. You know, some people like children when they're small, they'll ask a lot of questions. And you say, some parents say, yes, 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 yes. You know, and they're not even listening to what the child is saying. Child deserves you to answer their questions. Even if they're only three when they ask a question, you know the three, it's why, why, why. Answer mm -hmm. the why, whys, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Even in a very simple way that the child will understand. Uh, I, I believe child training is a, is a joint responsibility. Yeah, M mothers have a greater share all right of their responsibility because they have a lot of influence over their children. And it's, um, it, it, child training is a must for every mother and uh, it, you know if she doesn't want to be brought to shame in later life she must mm -hmm. train up her child well and mm -hmm. um, so because we're feminine it makes us tender you know we are tender you know um, and there's no child that doesn't need the touch of their mother the, the feminine touch that tenderness um, and they'll be nurtured by that um, it, it, you shouldn't want to be masculine like some of the modern women now. They'd, you know, they'd rather be masculine, you know, uh, rather than being tender as God has created them to be. Um, they say that children are, are, born, are, born, are, are brought up <coughs> by their father. When, when the father, for some reason or other, he has, he's bringing them up due to whatever circumstances it may have. And when it's just the father, they say that the children tend to have a masculine outlook on life. Mm -hmm. Even if they're girls, mm -hmm. you know, uh, we have different parts of anatomy to, to men. We have the womb and we have the breasts and there are special attributes which links, link the woman to their children. Because when they're small, we, 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 well, when they're born, they come out of her womb and they're nurtured there for nine months. And then they, they feed at our breasts, um, mm -hmm. you know, when they come out to feed up to a year or two, mostly. You know, so there, there's great nurturing there, you know, and women with young children should um, value that time when they're sitting down feeding their children, value that time with them, you know, it's it, they feel that closeness. And sometimes, you know, in later life, it, it gives us that feeling of closeness to God when we think of sitting at our mother's breast, you know, sitting there and have no, no worries, no fear. That's the way we should be secure in God through our life, feel that security. Uh, Colossians 3.21 says, fathers, fathers, do not embitter your children or they will become discouraged. Don't get, let them get discouraged. Don't embitter them. Some fathers will pick at their children and tease them, you know, and, and make them irritable. That is wrong. That is sinful. 
Do not mm-hmm. embitter them, you know. Uh, give them the instruction and the correction that belongs to Christian upbringing. You know, uh, Psalm 127 verse 3 says, Sons are a heritage from the Lord. Children are a reward for, for, from him. All children of believers must be viewed as gifts from God, mm-hmm. requiring wise and faithful stewardship. Mm-hmm. Help us to be good stewards of what God has placed with us. Amen. In the home, good stewards of your children. You know. Only as the Lord's ways and commands are, are accepted and thought and followed by children and parents uh, will they experience God's full blessings. You know, only as, as we follow them, follow them, you know, will we experience that full blessing in our home, that contentment in your home. That which every Christian family should have contentment in their home. Mm-hmm. Psalm 128 says, blessed are all who fear the Lord, who walk in his ways. You will eat the fruit of your labor. Blessing mm-hmm. and prosperity will be yours. You see, mm-hmm. when you do these things right, this is what it says. Blessing and prosperity will be yours and you will eat the fruit of your labor. It may mm-hmm. be hard, you know, when you're working and trying to mind children and all these sort of things. But God will bless that and reward that and prosper mm-hmm. you. And Mm -hmm. men, listen to this. He said, your wife will be like a fruitful vine within your house. Mm -hmm. Your sons would be like olive shoots around your table. Thus Mm -hmm. is the man blessed who fears the Lord. May the Lord bless you from Zion all the days of your life. May you see the prosperity of Jerusalem and may Mm -hmm. you live to see your children's children. Peace Mm -hmm. be upon Zion. So mm-hmm. God is, is, is looking, uh, God is looking for in us all. He's looking for good moral character and inward purity and outward righteousness. That's what mm-hmm. he's looking for. Mm-hmm. And it, it, the Bible tells us that true wisdom in Proverbs 24, verse 3 to 4, a house is built. I think Rachel quoted that. And by understanding it is established. And by knowledge shall the chambers be filled with all precious and pleasant riches. Praise the Lord. So your, home, your home is filled with riches. Even if you don't know it, your home is filled with riches. The chambers are filled with precious and pleasant riches. You're rich in the Lord. You're rich. He has established you. You're established there. There's understanding there. It's built on understanding. Praise God. It's established. Wisdom is a builder of homes. Mm. Uh, And and in fact, it's the master builder. It's it's the trade secret of the master builder. Paul in Mm. Corinthians, in 1 Corinthians 3 verse 10, he says, According to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder i have laid the foundation and another build it thereon but let every man take heed how he build it thereon mm. but once a home is founded on wisdom the devil cannot pull it down he can't no, no. you know mm. it can, it, but it can still be brought down by foolishness mm. either of the husband or the wife it can still be brought down by foolishness mm. you know uh, every wise woman built it her, uh, her house, but the foolish plucked it down with her hands. Mm. So a wise man or woman is one who knows uh, uh, from God's word which way to go and how to handle situations to mm. produce the desired results. Mm. When you're guided by the scriptures in every aspect of your life, you are walking in wisdom. So mm. this is how important the scriptures are when you're guided by them because there's wisdom. Scripture is wisdom. It's God's yes. wisdom for you. It's God's mm. wisdom. Uh, and it frustrates the devil, you know, because he knows your home is by wisdom founded mm-hmm. and, and, and no wind or storm can uproot it. Matthew 7, 24, 27 tells us that. Uh, so wisdom is the secret for a happy, loving and a successful home. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so it says that the tongue of the wise, because you're in the Lord, you are wise. You use knowledge aright. Use knowledge rightly. But the mouth of fools pour it out foolishness. So don't let foolish things come out of your mouth. Don't be foolish. So wisdom is really, it's the right use of, use of knowledge. Wisdom is the right use of knowledge. So every success in the home, it's fathered by facts. And um, and the facts of God's word. Mm. Uh, so lay up knowledge, because it says the mouth of the foolish is is near destruction. Mm. So the the knowledge you lay up is, is determined by how much wisdom you can operate in. 
Mm. So you can you can operate in the wisdom that you have received God in God's word. That is mm. the wisdom you will operate in as much as you have received. Mm. Um, so it says the heart of the prudent. We are prudent. It getteth knowledge. So we have to get knowledge. And the ear of the wise seeketh knowledge. Mm. That is why in 1 Peter 3 verse 7 it says, Ye husbands, do well with them according to knowledge. Mm. So it's according to the knowledge that you are dwelling with your wife, according mm -hmm. to the knowledge you have, giving honour unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel, and as being heirs together by the grace of life, that your prayers may not be hindered. So hus husbands should dwell with their wives according to knowledge. So knowledge it is. So get knowledge. Proverbs 4 verse 7 says, get knowledge. And another avenue of getting knowledge we know is <coughs> meditating, meditating on God's word, meditating on the word of God, uh, 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 reasoning and pondering and thinking through God's word. This is how you, me you meditate on it. Um, it's like the raw, God's word is like the raw material and the meditation is a refining process of, of the word of God as you meditate on it. I always said it's like the, chew, the cow chewing the cud when, when she keeps throwing up the, the, what she eats and, and chewing it and chewing and chewing so that it becomes part of her. Uh, so he want, God wants us to be deep thinkers, able to look at issues rightly and, uh, and divide them. Uh, if there's something out of place in your family, uh, you should be able to sit down with your spouse and find out a solution from the pages of scripture. You should discuss things not try to do them yourself, discuss things with your, with your spouse. That's what he's there for. That's what you are there for your spouse as well. Knowing what to do is what makes family life colourful. Uh, and, and when you're meditating, you're working together with God. And you'll get definite results. What must I do, Lord? Just ask the question. There's no problem that you're faced with in the home that there's not a solution. God is a solution to everything. He's, he solves every solution. So family life is a covenant and it's built through wise planning. So we have to have common sense as well. We have to keep abreast with the facts and not live beyond our means. You know, some people spend and spend and then at the end of the week they have nothing. They live beyond their means at the first three days of the week. So marriage is for good. God says about man, it is not good that you should be alone. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I will make you a helpmate. So you're the helpmate to your husband. Um, and it's for the good of man. Marriage was instituted for the good of man. Uh, and it's de designed to make life great for you. So when life is not great in marriage, it's a disappointment uh, to God himself, to the creator. Mm. It was designed to make life complete for us down here. Mm. So it's a disappointment when, to God when it's not. Mm. Women are to love their husbands and children. The Christian mother's, mother's divinely appointed way of honouring the word of God. And Deuteronomy says in 6 and in verse 7, this is talking to your children. Impress them on your children, the commandments. Mm. Talk about them when you sit at home. And when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up, get the children familiar with the word of God. You speaking it yourself, you teaching it to them, you buying the books that that will show them the word of God, their little children's Bibles and and the little children's stories and all that. That And question them and, and ask them questions about it. Proverbs 31 verse 27 says, she watches over the affairs of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Don't be idle. Mm. I don't think any of us listening in would be idle women because we spend our time in prayer, thinking about others, praying for our own needs, praying for others' needs, praying for our nations, praying for our husbands, praying for everyone. So idleness, you know, the devil finds, finds use for idleness. When you love your children, they will say you're blessed. And your husband will praise you. It says that in Proverbs 31, 28. When you love your children, they will call you blessed. You'll find that the adult children that have gone away from home, they will be always ringing you to tell you, you're blessed, you're blessed. You're, and your husband will praise you. 
you'll see your husband watching you around when you're going around making meals at that, watching you, looking at you with pride. They look at you with pride. They watch you. You know it. You don't have to say it. You know it, that they're looking on you with pride, that they love you. In verse four to five of the Proverbs, God's purpose for the woman in relation to the family, home and mother is that her attention and devotion be focused on her family mm. and be focused on the home, the husband and the children. She must be the centre of a Christian of, of a Christian mother's world. She must be the centre. And you know that you know yourself. Your children long for you to come home. If you're only out shopping, oh, mama's home. Oh, mama's home. It's it, 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 you're the centre of their home, the centre mm-hmm. of their world. Um, mm-hmm. And her duties is to be a helper and a faithful companion to her husband uh, and a good mother to their children. It is not good for a man to be alone. We heard that. You know, God made that you a suitable help, uh, helper for him. Um, uh, and give uh, um, task. You're given God tasks by God that is caring for your children uh, and he, God has entrusted them to you you know and you have to manage your home so that the enemy will have no opportunity you know and um, um, for, for any sort of slander so you're there to help the father too to train up the children in godly character and practical skills for life you know to mow the lawns and all these sort of little chores you give them, feed the fish, whatever it is, clean out the animals, whatever, whatever it may be, you know, to train them up in practical skills that they know how to change a light bulb and all these things, that they're not helpless and hopeless when they go out to live on their own. Deuteronomy 6 verse 6 to 9 tells you that. Uh, Proverbs 1 verse 8 to 9 says, listen, my son, to your father's instruction and do not forsake your mother's teaching. Verse 9 says, they will be a garland to grace your head and a chain to adorn your neck. You will be adorned of God when you do these things. You will be adorned of God. You will be known by God because you, when, you, when you obey these things and don't forsake your teaching that your father and instructions your father gave you and what your mother taught you. Um, Colossians 3 verse 20 says, Children, obey your parents in everything for that pleases the Lord. Yeah, and there's a promise with that too that you will have a long life um, and provide hospitality in your home that's the duty of husband and wife both invite people to your home uh, who cannot invite you back a lot of people will invite people to their home but they know they'll invite them back to have dinner with them you know the poor etc you know and we've been taught well in our church about these things um, because the, it says that we will be repaid at the resurrection in Luke 12 to 14 when we do these things Luke 12 um, to 14. I, I, I forgot to write down which verse in Luke. I think it's 12 verse 14, I think. Uh, caring in your home for elderly parents. We know that uh, a lot of people do that, you know, and that's a big chore. That's a big chore. And God will reward you for doing that. We have to take care of the elderly. We have to honour our father and our mother. Um, and the Bible says this is the principle that the, our... our um, uh, orphanage was built on um, out in in in, um, in um, Uganda. 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 Yeah, it says religion that our father accepts as pure and faultless is to look after orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. You'll find that in James one verse twenty seven. Pray uh, that both will fulfill their good given place and function in the home with their children. So pray that you will both fulfill the God given place and function in your home and your children. And I have a lot.